Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I visited Liverpool. I went watch shopping in Liverpool and I had a wonderful experience. Absolutely wonderful. Now, I started the day off with the best of intentions to do a wonderful blog of my day out. I made a lot of mistakes and to be very honest, I gave up right at the first hur hurdle and I can only apologise. I'm going to go back to Liverpool. I'm going to go back on my own this t next time. And I promise I'm going to do it properly. I swear. I just want you to see this first little snippet. Just so you know, I did have the best of intentions. What are you doing in the fridge? How long have you been here for? Oh, you need to stay out of the fridge, mate. Are you coming with me to Liverpool? We haven't got long. I'm gonna give you five minutes, then we're getting in the car and we're going. We're going watch hunting. I thought you remembered. And listen, hurry up and do yourself a favor, fatty. Stay out of the fridge. And as you can see, I was right up for it. I even did a video of me getting in the car, which I have deleted. And then we try to do videos but people got in the way security came up to me whatever and then the pièce de resistance was i had a really nice lunch and i said to the staff i like watches i talk about watches however your food was so nice when i leave when I, i'm going to go outside i'm going to say what a great place it was yada 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 put it in this video which i am and then oh, and then this happens almost famous and it's in liverpool and it poos all over five guys. We just had an amazing burger here with the most amazing waffle fries I've ever had in my life. Absolutely recommend this place. Fantastic meal, fantastic. He was a drunk. I was videoing about how great this restaurant was and this guy comes at me while I'm filming, walks right towards me. So I was convinced he was a manager of that establishment who wasn't in the loop who hadn't realized that i'd had a meal there and left a seven pound tip and asked for permission to video outside which i don't think you need permission for and maybe he was coming out to tell me jog on he wasn't he was a random drunk on a stag do who had nothing better to do than bother me now he was very nice we had a chat and he asked me what i was doing and you've got to be careful when you're talking to random dr drunks when you're wearing a rolex about what the hell you're doing so i kind of fobbed him off and left so at that point i thought this is a right pain in the ass i, I just get the camera out and i wasn't even using the gimbal i literally was holding my phone and then and then i get a random drunk so I, so then i thought ah oh, sod it I'll just go back to doing what I always do. I'll just tell you about it and show you some videos or footage. And I had some really good experiences. So I highly recommend you go to Liverpool and I'm gonna just take you back now to the day. Right, so when you go into Liverpool, there's a parking complex called Liverpool One. It's about four stories. You put your car in there and when you come out, you're literally bang in the center of town so you can just do your shopping we thought it was extremely convenient now the packing wasn't free though it was i think 19 pound i think we just went over six hours um but they have you know prices per hour um so you just have to you just have to work out how long you want to stay for if you're probably going with four people it's probably worth it but there was only two of us so i don't know whether if it was worth it anyway it was a good parking uh, complex and we were straight into the heart of Liverpool. Now, we go shopping and I see a Rolex AD straight away. I try to do video outside, which is this video here. That was quite difficult to do. I think next time I won't care about pedestrians, but there you go, that's the shop. Very nice shop. Now, that video was taken in the morning. I went back there later. I had a fantastic um, interaction in there and I wanted, I'm going to tell you all about it in a minute but um, this was just some of the b-roll that I shot now incidentally when I was doing that video security came up to me not while I was videoing though and they said what are you doing I said what I was doing they said that's fine that 
made me actually feel more comfortable because it means people are watching. So if they're watching, there's less chance of you getting mugged. Who knows? But I just felt a tiny bit safer, if that makes any sense, right? So we went walking around, and the first shop I went into was Goldsmiths. Now, everybody knows I hate Goldsmiths. But not anymore, because I spent about half an hour with the nicest person I've ever met. She was absolutely lovely. She let me try on whatever Rolex I wanted, and there was five Rolexes available to purchase. Um, one of them wasn't wasn't bad. It was um, uh, a two tone rose gold date, just diamond dial. Not for me. But it was for sale in a 41. I mean, that's somebody's dream watch. There was two Sky Dwellers, I think a rose gold and a gold. <sighs> 34, 35 grand, yeah. Not for me. Even if I could afford them, I wouldn't want one. And there was two other Datejust 36s. Now, what they seem to be operating is they do show all of the prices, which initially made me run in there and say, I'll take that watch. And then, but I didn't do it that way. I said, hey, you've got all these prices up. Um, does that actually mean they're for sale? And they said, oh no, we, we show the prices, but these five are for sale. Later on in a conversation, but this isn't confirmed, guys, she said that they had a Smurf, which was in the display case inside the shop, and that was for sale as well. But that, again, a Smurf, if anybody doesn't know, is a, is a white gold, uh, Submariner with a blue dial. Okay, that's thirty-four thousand pound, and that one was available as well. If I wanted to purchase that, that watch is incredible, but not, I, not, not for me. And she was really nice. She let me try on a Batgirl. She let me try on a Guinness. She thought it was quite funny all the nicknames because they are not allowed to call them by the nicknames. So therefore, she hadn't learnt the nicknames. If that makes sense. And I was actually genuinely shocked how light the, the Batgirl, the BLNR was. It felt like a different watch on that Jubilee bracelet. If I was trying that watch on in a grey market dealer because it felt so light, I would think it was a fake because it was just so, so much lighter even than this watch. It actually felt lighter than this 41 millimeter OP. So, that's saying something, when you think, when I wear my Submariner, it does feel heavier than this, but not this BLNR on the Jubilee. Now, I already answered this question before. When I was going to buy another watch, I was, I was saying, could I interchange the, the bracelets, um, so, but they're not compatible. So, my second thought would be, wow, what if I could get a Jubilee bracelet? on my Submariner, which I know is crazy, but I already know they, they're not compatible. There's something about the cases that a Submariner and a GMT case are not, the, the, the braces aren't interchangeable. So I've already answered that question before I need to ask it, if that makes sense. But definitely, I think the Jubilee bracelet on any Rolex is incredible, and it basically changes, makes the watch a lot lighter, if you ask me. Now, Another thing happened while I was in uh, Goldsmiths, which was a shocker to me. I could have gone on a waiting list for any Rolex I wanted. Now, I don't play that game anymore. I won't go on a wait list, I just won't. I already have a really good um, Rolex AD who doesn't want me to talk about them, so I won't. And I already have a really good relationship with Omega directly. And they don't mind me talking about them. That's the Omega Boutique at 260 Regent Street. So I'm pretty much set. So when the lady at Goldsmith says, you know, you can, um, you can actually go on a waiting list uh, for a back girl, my, my first instincts, instincts were to say no thanks. So if you want this alleged back girl and you want to go on the wait list, go to Liverpool, go to the Goldsmiths in Liverpool and ask them if you can go on the waiting list. Now remember, I was on a waiting list at Goldsmiths in Trafford Park for two years and never got this watch. 
While I was there, the young lady, the very nice young lady, was telling me about her watches and her future watches. She likes Cartier, she likes Tudors. Now, I offered to show her things about Tudors that she wouldn't want to see, and I warned her, if I show you this, you can never unsee it. Does that make sense? So I gave her the choice, she, she, she chose, is it the red pill or the blue pill in the matrix? It's the red pill, isn't it? She chose the red pill. So I showed her some examples. They had a couple of pandas in there, two of them, the, the tracking timing second hand was off centered. She said, no problem, I can fix that. She just thought all she had to do was open it up, undo the screw, start it and reset it, and then it, it wouldn't go back. And I said, that's because it never will. It wasn't set right at the factory. And there was another one and another one. There was three of them in there, and one of them was set right, the other two were slightly off. Now you have to look for this, okay? But it is there, it's a fact. The, the chronograph, the pandas, they're not set dead center. Okay, they're not on the dot. And that's, to me, a four and a half gram watch, it should be. I also showed her that the white date wheel on the Panda is not the same color as the dial, which she kind of said, well, you know, you know, what do you expect? And I said, I expect it to be the same color, but that's just me. And then I hit her with the last thing. I showed her that the bracelet is a completely different color to the case. And she was quite shocked because she couldn't deny it. She could actually see it. Once I showed it to her, it was, it was on, it was unseeable again. Does that make sense? I showed her this bracelet. I mean, the game was up. So she then said that she was going to be buying a Pelagos 39. Uh, what's wrong with that? And I told her about the loom on the hands. We all know that the loom on the hands on a Tudor Pelagos 39 is not very good. And the new black FXD, exactly the same problem. Incidentally, that black FXD, the latest one, is actually available in that shop to buy with no wait list as well. So that's Liverpool and Traffic Park Manchester both have one ready for sale today. And the other Rolex AD that I'm gonna tell you about that I went to later, they have one for sale as well. I'm not making this up. The latest Tudor, nobody wants it. Nobody wants the black FXD. They just don't want it because it's dull as foe, right? So she gives me the Pelagos, shoulder the problem with the loom. She said she could live with that. I said, really? I said, right, watch this. I got the bracelet clasp, I locked it, and then I fully closed it in the locked position. And she said, that's not right. I said, really? Opened it again, locked it, fully closed it. She was like, ugh, you've just unsold the watch. I unsold a watch to a watch seller. Isn't that incredible? Little old me. Right now, we both agreed that Rolexes are the best. She's on a waiting list for a Rolex. I'm not gonna tell you which one because I have to respect, respect people's privacy. I'm not gonna tell, her, tell you her name and I'm not gonna tell you the watch she's waiting for. But she also likes Cartiers. So I said to her, great, put your money into a Cartier, put your money into a Rolex, don't buy a Tudor. We went to the Cartier section and I fell in love. I fell in love with this watch. This watch just spoke to me. It's black PVD. And um, what she said was, if you damage that case, it's knackered, there's nothing they can do. So it's a bit of a risky watch for 8,000 pound. It's also got uh, their own proprietary movement. So she said, if you want accuracy, maybe this isn't the watch for you. Um, Cause I was telling her about, I like my watches to be accurate. It's still a good watch, but it's also a full dress watch. It's it's not a screw down crown. I haven't read the spec on the watch. I just fell in love with it. It was almost love at first sight. So maybe I'll add that watch to the collection. Um, it is available to purchase, no waiting list. Mm. Very comfortable on the wrist, by the way. And it had the interchangeable, the interchangeable bracelets, which is just so clever. Everybody should do this. Everybody should do that. Right, so I have to backtrack and say that my goldsmith's experience was incredible. 
incredible. First time, maybe people from Liverpool are just nicer. I then went to the Omega Boutique and again it was a wonderful experience, spoke to a, another gentleman and we talked about Omegas and my love for Omega. I didn't do any videos in there, I really should have but I didn't and I don't really know what else to say about it but um, they had all of the summer blues so if you want to get a summer blues uh, watch from an Omega dealer in Liverpool um, I've thought they were extremely friendly. Now it's a proper Omega only boutique, but I did find out that it's owned by David M. Robinson, um, or Robinsons, and um, they were really friendly and they're really helpful. Now, we then went for lunch to Almost Famous Burger and that was fantastic, the food was great. We basically found them from TripAdvisor they were a bit further out of town, not much further, but it was a good seven minutes. We just walked there and we walked back. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Their, their waffle fries were, waffle cheese fries were incredible too. And then we went to a Rolex AD. Now this Rolex AD was extremely nice, extremely friendly. Now there was a guy at the door, they had all the latest Rolexes, as you can see from this video, and we were expecting them to tell us to, you know, jog on, because we just walked in there, we've never been there before, and we had an hour and a half of the most glorious experience. We spent probably an hour with a really nice lady, and we just chit-chatted, we literally chit-chatted and had fun. Um, I didn't try on any watches, I didn't ask to try on any watches and I think I would have been allowed to go on a waiting list there for a watch but I don't want to play that game anymore plus we all know how it works guys you can't go in there and say right I've never spent a penny here but I love watches and um, can I have a BLNR and then six months later, they're going to ring you. Yeah, your BLNR and Jubilee is here. If I can't even get it at my own Rolex AD, and I've spent thousands there, and I'm a good customer there. So there was no, no harm, no foul. We had a nice chat. We just chatted about watches. We chatted about her OP. She has the Coral, a 36, with a nice big dent on it. She wears her watches and we talked about her granddad's watch which is a which is um a deville a gold deville i shit all over that watch but again i you know i wasn't very tactful considering it's her late grandfather's watch and then i believe that her next watch would be an iwc but not the big pilot she wants an iwc um and she mentioned a watch that i'd reviewed before and now I've forgotten the name of the watch. Uh, she also mentioned another word uh, that Rolex uses that I'd never heard of before and I have completely forgotten it again and um, I will put it in down here and that's how they describe certain watches and I thought it was hilarious that I'd never heard of it before but no it's a real word it's a Rolex word it's in the Rolex catalogue it's right here, guys, and I've forgotten it. I do. It, it's something to do with T-Rex or T-Rex or Rolex, Rolex T-Rex. It's something to do with, with, with Rolex. And it, it was really an interesting experience. So you just got to think. I went to Liverpool for the first time. I went into two Rolex ADs, never been there before. Both of them were super helpful, super friendly, and both offered to put me complete stranger on the list for a Rolex complete stranger and I believe that I would have got a Rolex from there it may not have been a hot Rolex but it would have been a Rolex and remember the Goldsmiths had five possibly six for sale there and then I'd like to thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one